Well, welcome back to lesson number four in our series on the transport layer based on a textbook by Jim Carose and Keith Ross, Computer Networking, A Top-Down Approach. In the last lesson, we were comparing UDP and TCP. Let's move forward now and start with a little ex examination of the UDP segment structure. Take a look at the UDP segment structure there on the left of the screen. The application data occupies the data field of the UDP segment. For example, for DNS, you'll remember that the data field contains either a query message or a response message. For a streaming audio application, audio samples fill the data field. The UDP header has only four fields, each consisting of two bytes or 16 bits. The port numbers allow the destination host to pass the application data to the correct process running on the destination end system. The length field specifies the number of bytes in the UDP segment, that is, header plus data. An explicit length value is needed since the size of the data field may differ from one UDP segment to the next. The length field specifies the length of the UDP segment, including the header in bytes. The checksum is used by the receiving host to check whether errors have been introduced into the segment. The checksum is also calculated over a few of the fields in the IP header in addition to the UDP segment. The UDP's checksum provides for error detection. That is, the checksum is used to determine whether the bits within the UDP segment have been altered by noise in the links or while stored in a router as it moved from source to destination. As we know, data is transmitted across a network in binary form, ones and zeros using some form of binary coding system like ASCII. However, whether the binary digits represent an ASCII value or a number, they, still, they are still a bunch of zeros and ones, which can be summed to create a number. UDP at the sender side adds up all of the 16-bit words in the segment. The result of that addition is put into the checksum field of the UDP segment. Checksums are used to ensure the integrity of a file after it's been transmitted from one host to another. This can be across the internet or simply between two computers on the same network. Either way, if you want to ensure that the transmitted file is the same as the source file, you can use a checksum. The checksum is calculated using a hash function and is posted in this checksum field. To verify the integrity of the file, a receiving host calculates the checksum using a checksum calculator program and then compares the two to make sure they match. Checksums are used not only to ensure a corrupt-free transmission, but also to ensure that the file has not been tampered with. When a good checksum algorithm is used, even a tiny change to the file will result in a completely different checksum value. Many link layer protocols, including Ethernet, also use error checking. So why do it at the transport layer? The reason is that there is no guarantee that the links between source and destination provide error checking. Some link layer protocols do not. Furthermore, even if segments are correctly transferred across a link, it's possible that bit errors could be introduced when a segment is stored in a router's memory. Since neither link-by-link -link reliability nor in-memory error detection is guaranteed, UDP must provide some error detection at the transport layer on an end-to-end -end basis if the end-to-end -end data transfer service is to provide error detection. 
Since certain functionality must be implemented on an end-to-end -end basis, functions placed at the lower levels may be redundant or of little value compared to the cost of providing them at the higher level because IP is supposed to run over just about any layer 2 protocol it is useful for the transport layer to provide error checking as a safety measure although UDP provides error checking it does not do anything to recover from an error some implementations of UDP simply discard the damage segment others pass the damage segment to the application with a warning the problem of implementing reliable data transfer occurs not only at the transport layer but also at the link layer and the application layers as well. So obviously reliable data transfer is one of the most important problems in all of networking. The figure you see here illustrates the framework for our study of reliable data transfer. The service abstraction provided to the upper layer entities is that of a reliable channel through which data can be transferred. With a reliable channel, no transferred data bits are corrupted or lost, and all are delivered in the order which they were sent. This is precisely the service model offered by TCP to the Internet applications that invoke it. Think about this for a minute. A single character of the alphabet requires at least 8 bits. A single word averages around 40 bits. Consider how many zeros and ones would be required for a large document. A single pixel or color dot that displays on your computer screen at any given time may require 30 or more bits to produce. Imagine how many bits would be required to produce a single frame of a movie. And the reliable data transfer service being offered guarantees that none of them will be lost or corrupted. The challenge explains why not all types of communication use protocols that provide service. The overhead required to do so would be something that the developer would want to limit whenever possible. It is the responsibility of a reliable data transfer protocol to implement this service abstraction. This task is made difficult by the fact that the layer below the reliable transfer protocol may be unreliable. For example, TCP is a reliable data transfer protocol that is implemented on top of an unreliable IP in an end-to-end -end network layer. More generally, a layer beneath the two reliably communicating endpoints might consist of a single physical link or a global inner network. Consider what protocol mechanisms are needed when the underlying channel can corrupt bits or lose entire packets. One assumption we'll need to adopt throughout our discussion is that packets will be delivered in order in which they were sent. Let's take a look at this graphic to see the effect of what is taking place on the application layer. In this uh, graphic you see that the sending process has passed some data down to the transport layer, thus a reliable channel. And that data is passed the, the length of the channel and is received by the process at the other end from that reliable channel. Now let's take a look at it the way it actually exists. Yes, the sending process is passing the data down to the transport layer, where the transport layer on the sending side is providing that reliable data transfer protocol. And it takes that series of bits and puts it on an unreliable channel. And the bits arrive at the other end at the transport layer where it takes the bits in, verifies the validity of the bits, authenticates that they are correct and in order, and passes it back up to the receiving unit intact. Let's take another look of how reliable data transfer occurs. 
we see that the application calls RDT send to pass the data so that it will reach the receiver's upper layer. The transfer layer protocol now has the data on the sending side and it calls UDT send in order to, to transfer that packet over an unreliable channel to the receiver. Now remember that it created a segment or a PDU, and we'll use the term PDU from here on out because this same, these same principles apply to several layers, not just the transport layer. So you will recall that the transport layer created a PDU it included the information that will verify that the data is intact and in order. And so it is sending that PDU with that UDT underscore send call over the unreliable channel. When it arrives at the other end, RDT underscore RCV is called when the data or the PDU arrives on the receiving side. RDT underscore RCV passes that data into the transport unit on the receiving side where it validates the data, strips off the header and validates the data by using that checksum value and other tools to be sure that what was sent is what was received and then it calls deliver data, deliver underscore data, another call is to pass that data up to the application on the receiving side. So you see this process of transferring the data from an application unit on the sender through the transport layer protocols across this unreliable channel to receive it at the other end and then to, to verify the data and pass it on up involves a number of different calls or programs that need to take place or actions that need to take place. Well, I think that's a load. So let's take a break here, review your notes, and take care of any business that you have to deal with, and we will pick up on Lesson 5 when you're through.